Welcome to a tutoring video with Ms. Taylor. We're going to be looking at a heating curve calculation in this particular problem. Um, at the top of your screen, you should see information for ethanol. I've given you the molar mass, melting point, boiling point, heat of fusion, also known as enthalpy of fusion, heat of vaporization or enthalpy of vaporization, and then the specific heat capacities for the solid, liquid, and gas phases. Uh, my program doesn't allow me to type in a degree symbol, so I put it in asterisk rather than a degree symbol. So we're going to do this calculation for 5 grams of ethanol that is starting from 125 degrees, negative 125 degrees Celsius, and we're going to heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. So before we dive into this problem, we need to think about the journey our ethanol is going to go on. So first question you should ask yourself is, what phase is it in? Okay, so it's starting from negative 125 degrees Celsius. Well, the boiling point is negative 114. So that means that we have solid ethanol. And before anything else can happen, we have to heat it from negative 125 degrees Celsius to the melting point, negative 114 degrees Celsius. Okay, once we hit the melting point, the phase change occurs. And remember, phase changes are the result of intermolecular forces either overcoming or being overcome. In this case, they're being overcome because our molecules are gaining enough kinetic energy to get far enough away from each other that they slip into a less ordered phase, in this case from a solid to a liquid. So we have melting. And we will have to calculate the amount of energy required to make it melt. Once we have melted, we are now a liquid. And we are still at the melting point because, remember, there is no temperature change during a phase change. So we're going to pick back up from negative 114 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to keep heating until we hit the temperature for our next phase change, which would be boiling. So we're going to heat it to 78.37 degrees Celsius. Okay, once we've hit that temperature, then we have our next phase change, which would be boiling or vaporization. But we didn't stop at 78.37 degrees Celsius. Our problem says to calculate to 100 degrees Celsius. So now we have the gas that's going to be heated from 78.37 degrees Celsius to the final temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So each one of these steps represents its own separate calculation, and then the last step is always to sum them, get the Q total. So we're going to look at each calculation individually, and then we'll sum them. Okay. So whenever we are simply heating a substance, like steps 1, 3, and 5, we are going to use QMCAT, what we call, I like to call it in my classroom. Q equals MC delta T. Now, if you are one of my students and you are working out of the Zoom doll book, your book calls it QSMAT. So Q is heat, M in both cases is mass, where your book differs is the C and the S. Now, I prefer to use the capital C for the specific heat capacity because the college board, which dictates AP chemistry stuff, uh, uses this equation on the AP chemistry equation sheet. So I will use this equation. But if you're looking in the Zoomdahl Introductory Chemistry textbook, he uses a lowercase s for specific heat capacity. The delta T, the triangle and then the T, always means final minus initial. So just as a reminder, delta T is T final minus T initial. So for whatever heating phase you were at, 
the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So let's plug these numbers in. So for this step, Q is going to equal 5 times, and I'm using these numbers that we wrote that were written at the very top of the screen. The specific heat capacity for the solid listed was 2.419 joules per gram degree Celsius. And if we scroll back up, we said we are heating it from 120, negative 125 to negative 114. So our final temperature is negative 114. And our initial temperature was negative 125. And if you want to change that to plus positive 125, that would give you the same thing. But this answer is going to be in joules. Okay, because you've got... 5 grams, and I know that looks like an S, so I will change that. So 5 grams times joules per gram degree Celsius times degree Celsius. So the grams and the degree Celsius cancel, and you're left with joules. Now, word of caution, um, you're going to have some answers in kilojoules and some answers in joules. I would make it habit to just go ahead and convert your joules to kilojoules because otherwise you'll have very large answers. Now I'm maintaining these digits because I'm not going to round until I get to my final answer. So there's the amount of energy that it takes to get to from the starting temperature to the melting point. Alright, our next step is to melt. change color. So in order to melt, we have to know the heat of vaporization. Not the heat of vaporization, excuse me, the heat of fusion. And the heat of fusion from at the top of the screen was 4.9 kilojoules per mole. Notice the mole. In order to get the energy, you just multiply the moles of ethanol times your heat of fusion. But I didn't give you the moles, so yes, you're going to have to convert and say 5 grams times 1, oh, one mole over the molar mass, which I did give you, which was, doo -doo -doo -doo, scrolling back up, 46.068. So grams cancel, and you have 0 0.1085 moles. So now that you have moles, you can carry out the rest of this calculation. And this one will be in kilojoules, so for this one you'll get 0.53165 kilojoules. Okay, so on to step three. Step three in our journey is to heat the liquid from negative 114 to 78.37. So again, we are not looking at a phase change. We are looking at just heating from one temperature to another. So again, we're going to use Q. Mass is 5. The specific heat capacity is different for each phase. So this time we're in the liquid phase and the specific heat capacity is 2.44 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now our final temperature for this step is 78.37 and our starting was negative 114. So plug that in and again remember the Q's are are going to be in joules unless you're given some other unit for your specific heat capacity. But again, I encourage you, go ahead and convert these. So that would be 2.34614 kilojoules. Now, do you really need to carry out all those decimal places when you know you're going to round to three sig figs? If you wanted to cut it off at the nine, that's fine. But I like to carry out my decimal places until the end. All right, so we've completed step three. Back to step four, boiling. Okay, we've hit another phase change. Now for 
this phase change, we do need the enthalpy of vaporization, which at the top of the screen was 38.56 kilojoules per mole. And again, I'm pointing out that this is going to involve moles, which we calculated in step two. So we can just plug in 0 0.1085 times 38.56. And that will give us 4.18376 kilojoules. All right, step five. Scrolling back up. We are now in the gaseous state, and we're going to heat from the boiling point to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is another QMCAT step. So five times specific heat capacity for the gas is 1.88 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we are going to 100, oops, this is for my positive, from 78.37. And again, this is gonna be in joules and we will need to convert. So that would be 0.2033222 kilojoules. So we have calculated every step in our journey. So the final step is to get Q total. And if you like to write that as step six, that's fine. So I'm just going to take the Q values from each step and add them all together. So we had 0.133045 plus 0.53165 plus 2.346914 plus 4.18376 plus, I know I'm running out of space, 0 0.203322. So punch that all into your calculator and yes, now we finally need to round to three sig figs because the uh, mass that I gave you had three significant figures and the initial temperature had three significant figures. And that should round to 7.40 kilojoules, which is not really a great deal of energy at all. So to recap, you need to chart the journey, calculate for each part of the journey, and then add them all together, being very careful of whether you're using grams or moles and whether your answer is in kilojoules or joules. Thanks for watching.